On October 14th, I went to the Nederlandse Breidagen, which is a Dutch knitting festival, and the name literally means Dutch Knitting Days. And to me, it is the most knitty <laughs> festival. Um, it focuses most on knitting and crochet. And I visited this edition with Charlie from Charlingual, who also has a crafty YouTube channel, so go ahead and check her out. It was lots of fun to check out all of the stands together with her, and I will be putting the names of the stands and of the companies. I will be putting that on the screen for you. Um, here we are at the stand of Undercover Otter, uh, an indie dyer from Amsterdam. They have so many cool yarns and colorways and just gorgeous stuff all around. So the uh, Breidage, the knitting festival, is held every October uh, in the Netherlands. And I think it's always held in the same place, which is Zwolle. It's, um, it's like to the northeast of the Netherlands. And it's pretty easy to reach by public transport because Zwolle has a big train station and the venue is just a short walk away. There are a couple more um, knitting related festivals in the Netherlands, such as the Kreadu, Handwerkbeurs, the Netherland. Um, but to me, the Breidagen are the most, um, the largest ones, which only have knitting and crochet and spinning. So it's, it's really only fiber, um, fiber specific. Whereas the Kreadu might be much larger, but um, they also encompass lots more crafts, so it's the, the, the knitting and crochet stands are kind of more diluted. What I also thought was really fun to see was that a lot of stands were really focused on um, being more sustainable. I saw lots of stands with recycled yarns, recycled fibers, or with products that relate to mending things that you've made before, uh, so that was all really, really great to see. We met some lovely people at the craft fair too. Of course, they had to go see my friend Alexa, who just came out with a new book. And then we also finally got to meet Valerie from Joyance Fiber Arts. And you can see here that I'm wearing my sweater that I especially knit for the Breida. Maartje Bos from I Knit was here with her new book, which is currently only in Dutch, but who knows, it might come out in English. Uh, lots of gorgeous patterns in there, and Maartje was at the stand herself, and she had taken some of her gorgeous samples with her, uh, such as the pepper pot shawl that you can see here. And the stand, Wol met Verve, which is a very talented Dutch indie dyer, uh, Sylvia had made some kits for the shawls. And uh, at Walmart Fairfa I also saw some roving for spinning, which I'm not sure if I'd seen before, so that was really lovely to see. And you know, Sylvia Stan is just beautiful. It's, you know, so much eye candy. They're all such gorgeous yarns. You can see some true wool happiness here. <laughs> and I was so happy to see stands with yarns from all around the world um, to be here at this Dutch knitting festival. Uh, most of the shops are Dutch, uh, but they import the yarns from elsewhere. Some of the stands actually had pure Dutch wool, which was fascinating to me, and I will talk to you about that later. Aside from yarns, you could also find lots of enamel pins, project bags, knitting needles.
Charlie found some new yarn in her favorite terracotta color, <laughs> so of course she had to take that home. And we were just so inspired by all the things that we saw today. Um, I actually regret not going a second day because, you know, I was there on the Friday, uh, October 14th. Uh, the Breidag was also um, open on the Saturday, October 15th. And, you know, I, <laughs> uh, Charlie and I, we, we stayed from start to finish and, you know, we wish we would have had more time. Um, part of the reason why we ran out of time is because, of course, we know so many people there, so we had to chat, or we wanted to chat everywhere. Um, but even if you don't know anyone, it's, it's, it's a great festival to fill a whole day with. Whereas some other knitting festivals, um, you might only need three hours or so for that. So it was great just spending the whole day here, seeing all of those beautiful yarns, going home with a head full of ideas. It was just a great festival. There were lots of products for spinners as well, so it's not just for knitting and crocheting. Um, you had several shops that sold spinning roving and bats, and there was even uh, a shop that I showed at the beginning, Studio Spindle, where you could learn how to spin on a spindle, which was really cool. everyone wow I'm <laughs> very pale today but since it's Halloween I'm just saying it's my Halloween costume um, <laughs> so I wanted to show you what I got at the knitting festival I'm not in my usual spot um, I'm here on the couch with Momo and I'm going to <laughs> take the camera so you can see her there she is Mama G. Oh, hello. Oh. Sweet Mama. So, yeah, the Breidag, they were amazing. Uh, I wish I would have gone a second day, but there's always next year. And next year they will be held as well in October, uh, October 13th and 14th. So I'm thinking, because it's usually on a Friday and Saturday, that it's Friday the 13th. And uh, I will be doubly looking forward to seeing Undercover Otters stand <laughs> on Friday the 13th because uh, they have a lot of uh, spooky themed um, products and lots of their yarns are named after like, you know, uh, oh, Suddenly I can't remember anything, uh, like like Freddy and Jason and uh, Killer Clowns and, you know. And speaking of Undercover Otter, let me just jump right in to things that I bought. Um, and now wait, before, before I show you things that I bought, I should um, tell you about, you know, um, I was, <laughs> I feel like every maker says this before going to a fiber festival i was planning not to buy a lot and but i i don't think that i bought a lot so i think i think i kind of stuck uh stuck to it but um uh, this time it was not only because of a uh, finance perspective or something like that but um also because um i'm in the process of cleaning out or organizing uh, my 
yarn stash and not just my yarn stash but everything that I have here in my home uh, and I'm being just super mindful of things that are coming into my home and you know do I want them yes or no will I use them yes or no um, I've got a whole thing coming up next year I'm going to have a theme next year and I will reveal that mm, closer to the end of the year and part of that is, you know, taking a look at what comes into my home and um, seeing, you know, asking myself, do I really need this? Do I really want this? Uh, I don't want to buy just for the sake of buying. But um, when going to a fiber festival, you know, because I, I really invested in this, this branch, this, you know, fiber arts, in the crafts branch. Uh, I myself work in the crafts branch, uh, but it's not just because of that. Um, I, I want people to succeed in their, with their companies, you know, so I want to support companies. And yeah, so sometimes I buy things, not necessarily because I need them, but because I just want to support uh, this brand and what they do. So I bought some fiber at Undercover Otter. I have already bought and spun up some Undercover Otter fiber before. Um, um, I spun that into a three ply and um, knit socks with it because it contained uh, nylon. This is 90% merino and 10% stellina. It is all non superwash, so that is amazing. Um, and it is a beautiful teal blue blend. I'm actually going to open it for you. I did not do this on my Dutch vlog, but um, yeah, I just really want to see the fiber myself as well. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I feel like if I'm gonna get it out, uh, I won't be able to get it back in, so I'll just leave it like this. Um, so it has some sparkle. If I move it around, you can see that. So it's gorgeous, um, and I want to spin this really finely so that I can use it in, um, in a sweater sometime. And <laughs> I love this, uh, it kind of looks like a milk carton, it looks really, really cute. Uh, right, so that was my first purchase at Undercover Otter. Uh, I also got a pin there that I threw into this bag and I'm not sure if I'll be able to ah, there it is there it is okay so <laughs> yeah <laughs> I had to get it it's a shark in a bikini which is hilarious to me um not sure if this is any of any reference as well on the back it also just says bikini shark um some say that it was referencing the uh, super bowl super bowl uh super bowl super bowl show by katie perry in which she danced in a bikini and she had two sharks dancing with her um yeah but i don't know because the bikini is not the same so maybe not um and this one the colorway name is Dagon, Dagon, D-A-G-O-N, which is a half fish, half man creature from H.P. Lovecraft. And if you look it up, it's like really creepy um, creature. Um, but um, yeah, <laughs> I'm not really into spooky stuff, only if it's spooky and cute. So. <laughs> But I still really, really like it, and uh, I love the color, and the color um, matched um, the the, uh, the H.P. Lovecraft things perfectly, I think. Um, so next up, I want to talk about this yarn purchase. This was my last purchase of the day. This yarn is from Roland Creatif.
Holland Creatief. And Holland Creatief um, is owned by Antje. And she has a great yarn stand. It's uh, It kind of looks like a vintage candy stand. Um, or like a vintage flower stand. It looks really cute, like one of those old market stands. Um, and she had gorgeous yarns. And yeah, so um, part of my, I don't want to say resolution, but part of my idea for buying new yarns was that um, I should buy a quantity that's big enough to knit a sweater from it. Uh, because sweaters and cardigans are things that I uh, love to use most. Um, and you know they work best for me with in just one color um or in maybe just two or three colors and um before like previously on yarn festivals i would buy a single skin here i would buy a skin here because i just wanted some some of all of it and i wanted to support as many people as i could um but that resulted in me just having uh, a, a mismatch of things and some things that don't really go together um, sometimes you can make that work such as in the shawl that I'm wearing which still has some ends attached so don't look too closely this was one skein of truly hooked which I used with uh, skeins of Ushitita so it's two plus one skein um, and yeah, beforehand I didn't really have a use for this single skein, um, so it was really great to use it here. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of shawls, but, uh, I also use sweaters more than I use shawls. So, so I wanted to shop for sweaters mostly and if you could feel this, this is 70% baby alpaca and 30% merino. It is so soft. I love alpaca. It's it's so super soft. And oh, Anche gave me a really cute stitch marker as well of a little sheep. And this dark green color is one of my latest obsessions. I love this dark green. Um, might be influenced by my boyfriend Tim because green has always been his favorite color. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Whenever he goes out he usually has to ask me, is this too much green? Is this too green? Because he will wear green shoes, green trousers, green sweater, green hat, green jacket. Um, yeah, so Love this yarn. Yeah, I will be knitting a sweater with this. I will be pairing it with mohair because uh, I wanted to have a little bit more structure because alpaca has a uh, reputation of drooping, of like sagging um, in the sense that, you know, if you knit a sweater with it, then in a year you'll have a dress um, just you know, because of the way the yarn relaxes and yeah. And to, to have a little bit more um, stability, a little bit more structure, I'm going to knit it together with something. And um, mohair was my first choice. So I'm going to get some light green mohair to go with that. And then this is my purchase that I'm most excited about because, and this is also a purchase that I had planned 100% beforehand because it is 100% Dutch wool and it is called Schapjes wool which means sheep wool and you might think um, I, I, uh, I'm working with a yarn company called Schapjes uh, which was previously called Schapjes wool and this one is Schapjes wool and a lot of people think Schapjes means sheep but it doesn't, it means ships uh, and 
schaapjes actually means sheeps. So, yes, yeah, one vowel difference, just like in English. Sheep, ships, uh, schaapjes, schaapjes, any. Um, I, I learned linguistics, uh, so I'm always really into words and stuff. So, that's like really simplistic words and stuff. Um, so, schaapjes wool is a brand by Trollwool, Trollwool, from, oh, Driebergen? I don't know. And Schaapjes wool is, is made from Dutch sheep. Uh, it's probably spun somewhere else because we don't have, um, oh, what's the word, spinneries? No. Mills? Probably mills. We don't have any yarn spinning mills left here in the Netherlands. Although I know of some efforts of um, setting up a new one. But yeah, so it's probably spun and, you know, whatever, somewhere else. But uh, this is a Dutch sheep from Lutjebroek. There, Lutjebroek. Um, which is, okay, um, it's, it's somewhere to the north east of Amsterdam. But still overall in the west part of the Netherlands. So I think if you're not from the Netherlands that that's probably the best way I can explain this. And I also got four skeins because I want to make a sweater with this. Um, it's 100 grams each. 300 meters, uh, so it's a very nice weight. Uh, I think it's uh, like a sport weight or like a thin DK. And the color is Ossebloed, which means ox blood. And ox blood, um, I believe, you know, it has a whole history and um, it has history in both like Scandinavian countries, but also in here in the Netherlands. Um, uh, I. I really should read more about this, but for now, I think, I think, uh, Og's blood was, um, you, uh, was sneered on windows and doors, and afterwards it became kind of a fashion color, or kind of like an important color. Uh, so here in the south of the Netherlands, in Maastricht, uh, there are a couple churches where some doors are still painted in, well, now it's just, you know, it's not real ox blood, but it's in a uh, dye pigment that resembles that color. Uh, so you will see some kind of these pale red doors and windows. and. Uh, there's even a church, church that is fully painted red in Maastricht. So, uh, so yeah, it's a very significant color. So when I saw this, I knew like, okay, this this is what I must have. Um, so, yeah, really, really happy with this. Uh, it doesn't feel too rough, um, although I'm not I'm not very princessy about yarns being rough. Uh, but I think I might rather uh, knit this into a cardigan than into a sweater or, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm not too fussy about that. Uh, on the label, you also see a little sheep here. And then on the other side, a little troll for trollable. Um, and then I got this book as well, Holland Breie. Holland knitting. Um, a lot of people ask me, like, what is the correct name for the Netherlands? And it is Nederland. So, Netherlands is the correct term. But um, you can still use Holland. It's just, you know, an old name. Um, but a lot of people will not mind if you if you use Holland instead of the Netherlands. I know um, some people actually prefer Holland over the Netherlands because um, and I know I don't know if this was in World World War One or World War World War Two, but uh, some of these soldiers um, who rode back to their family. 
they would um, include an acronym at the at the at the bottom. If they were fighting in the Netherlands, in Holland at that time, they would um, underneath their letter they would say Holland, hope our love. Hope our love lasts and never dies. And uh, if if they went to Italy, they would um, sign it with, "I tenderly always love you." And you know, uh, I think that's very very cute. Um, and um, yeah, well, we we still use it ourselves, as you can see. But you know, um, anyway. So, Holland Breien is a pattern book and it uses the yarn from Scapius Wool. So you see the same logo on here. Um, and there are just lots of beautiful patterns in here. And this glove is really nice as well. I love the textured effect. Oh yes, here's the tea cozy. There it is. I love that. <laughs> yeah, so it's a really beautiful book. And uh, there's lots of history in here about uh, wool and Dutch sheep as well. So I will be reading all about that. Lots of sheepy pictures. I don't know if it has been translated into other languages. So it might just be in Dutch. Um, yeah. Oh, it has some information about Scapi's wool here. So it will come from the sheep in Lutjebroek or the Utrechtse Heuvelrug. And afterwards, after sorting the wool, it's sent to a spinnery in Cornwall in the UK um, at the Natural Fibre Company. And they're specialized in spinning um, rare uh, British sheep breeds. Um, the wool is cleaned and dyed um, according to environmental laws. Um, the wastewater of the spinnery is um, checked often, so there is um, so they shouldn't use any chemicals while processing the furs. Uh, the furs, I mean, yeah, the the fleece. Um, so it's, it's very, very strictly done and this guarantees as well that the wool, um, doesn't contain any harmful, uh, things for the environment, but also for the user. And they also work with a German spinnery and it's of, on a very small scale and also environmentally friendly. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's just, it's fully traceable, um, this wool. It's fully traceable to, you know, everywhere where it's been. Uh, so that is just really, really interesting um, and rare, might I add. Um, because, you know, all of the yarns that you, you buy commercially, you don't know where they've been. Um, so... So this is just really, really fun uh, to see, and it's it's good to see that there is um, more effort being put into actually using local wool. Um, I know that they also sell the, this wool on their website, Tollable. Let me just quickly see if that is also in English, because I know the Breidage website is not in English, even though you could totally visit and most of the stand holders know English, so... Uh, Tollable is available in English. That's very good. Yeah, when, when you are living outside the EU, please email your wishes to info at tollable.nl and we will make a manual order for you. So, yeah, I will, I will link them down below. Um, obviously, I do want to say that the benefit for me of using this wool is because it comes from Dutch sheep, and uh, obviously, you know, it is being sent to the UK or to Germany to, to process it, but the merit of it is that it's local to me. 
uh, local to people of the Netherlands. So if you would purchase this yarn from the UK, for example, that would not be very logical. And especially because in the UK there are so many uh, um, companies that have local British wool. Um, so yeah, just just think about that. But um, yeah, on the other hand, um, it would be great for people to use this wool because it is is very you know um, ethical, environmentally friendly, sustainable, um, and it helps the farmers here actually get something for their wool because they they have had to like just throw the wool away, just burn it, because it costs more um, to have it sheared than it actually, you know, um, I don't know what the word is, but you get it. It costs more to have it sheared than to actually sell them. Um, so, uh, <laughs> that was my TED talk about Dutch wool. And now my very last purchase of the day was at VMCA Knitwear, so VMCJ Knitwear, um, who sell indeed, uh, who sell hand-dyed yarns, but who also sell pins, and I got this beautiful pin, which says make, wear, and mend, which is totally in line with, you know, my values, so I really, really, um, like this pin and then I also got some nonsense pins and I'm going to have to censor what it says <laughs> so this one says uh, bull shirt remover and this one is for fork boy repellent and um, yeah I just thought they were very funny <laughs> So I got those. Also, how awesome is it to have a laundry detergent as a pin? <laughs> that might be very millennial of me. Um, right, so that was my review of the of the Breidage. Um, I really do hope that knitting festivals in the Netherlands will become more international because uh, I just personally love going to, for example, Oslo Strike Festival uh, in Norway or uh, Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Um, and I know there's one in Barcelona, which I think is happening this weekend. And I, oh, or maybe next weekend, I don't know. But I cannot attend. But um, I just, I just love going to. Um, knitting festivals abroad and I would love for more people to come to the Netherlands for this knitting festival um, yeah and also yeah just yeah I would love that <laughs> uh, yeah maybe I will make a separate video about that if I feel like I want to talk a lot more about it um, so I hope you enjoyed this um, this video and do let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you are planning to go to any yarn festivals, wherever that may be, uh, because they might be yarn festivals that I don't know yet. And uh, yeah, I, I really want to visit more. So yes, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.